Jacob in California, you're on with Dan and Matt. How are you? Cool, doing good. How about you guys? Doing all right. Good. Cool, man. Cool. Well, I'll just get right to it. I know that uh, we've gone a long time on the show already, so thanks for uh, taking the call. But um, yeah, so I had I had this this theory um, that I've been working on. You know, uh, I will say with God's guidance. I know that's not a popular phrase around here. However, um, you know, as I'm reading the Bible, um, I actually. Oh, and Matt, I will say one thing to you. Um, you made a comment uh, a long time ago, a few times, quite a few times. And when I was a Trinitarian still, uh, it actually was one of the things that made me go like, wow, that's a really good point. I don't know how to get around that. You said God sacrificed himself to himself to appease himself. And that stuck with me. And I was like, yep. man, I don't, that is a good point. I don't know how to get around that. <laughs> so uh, I, I came to the knowledge through the Bible, though, that I actually don't hold to the Trinitarian view anymore because I don't think it's coherent. I, I'm um, curious. I'm curious. And I'll let you, I'll let your point there. just, but just for clarity, are you suggesting sure. then that you think the Joe and comma is an interpolation in addition? Do I think that what is, I'm sorry, the Joe and comma, the, 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 the passage that was generally scholars think that this was edited to make an excuse for the Trinity and that the original versions don't include that passage. Uh, I, never just go on with your point. It's not going to be. Well, it's no, not going to be relevant okay. I would, today. I would address it, whatever you were talking about. Yeah, I, I know there's one passage in First John that I do believe was added in later on that there are three that bear record in heaven. Right. And that That's what I'm talking about, Father. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes, I do believe that that was added in later. Yes. Okay. Cool. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So uh, anyway, my point though was just that as I've been studying the Torah, because I am a Torah observant Christian. Um, to the best of my ability, some things are applicable, some are not. That's just a theological fact of it. It's not cherry picking. Um, however, I do think a lot of the laws in the Old Testament would fix or at least take a step towards fixing some of the societal problems we see today. And the one huh. example I wanted to bring up, uh, yeah, yeah. So the one example I wanted to bring up was um, fatherless households or, or single parent rates, how they have just absolutely skyrocketed. Uh, in the last, I don't know, 20, 30 years, depending on the statistics you go to, right? It was can, 20%. Can I ask you, I know you have a, I know you've been thinking about this and you've been wanting to tell Matt, but can I ask you a quick question? All good, man. Do I'm, you, do you think yeah. that all the laws in the old Testament, all of those ideas, do you think they're all good for society today? I don't think some are applicable today. So mm -hmm. it's not even a matter of if I think they're good for society or not. I don't think some are applicable, but I think the ones that are, yeah, certainly would. Okay, so I'm glad to address uh, any of them it, that you guys want. Yeah, if some are applicable, right, and some aren't, then why not just base a society on what's applicable, and just take that? Why do we have to include the well, entire Torah into yeah, our I consideration? Why? Well, I mean, you, you have to know you have to know it because then you can say whether or not it's applicable or not. You see what I mean? Do so we have, have to know? Do we have to know the applicable. Torah to know if it's applicable or not? Can we just look at the idea itself and say, hey, this is a good thing to implement into our society? Okay, I think, I think the slight disconnect here might be that I'm saying it's applicable based on theology, and you might, okay. you might be saying applicable based on like society. Is that correct? I don't want to put words. Yeah, here. yeah, that's probably what it is. But like, do we do we need a, a theological explanation to know whether something is good for us or not? I think it's the only way you can get a real understanding of of what's in there. Because if you have bad theology, you're going to come up with bad conclusions. I mean, there's denominations of Christianity that prove that. You know, what if you have no theology? Uh, yeah. <laughs> what if you're like us? Yeah, if you have no theology, uh, you can go back and actually look at, like, the common dooms. Uh, I'm sorry, the dooms of the common law back in the uh, colonial days, you know, mm -hmm. of America. And you can see that they were actually word for word almost with the Ten Commandments. They didn't call them the Ten Commandments, though. But people did them and they applied them. And, and in some cases, I would argue that you have you had less of the crime and things like that that we have today. I mean, some— well, Yeah, there were less people. Like that, so. So, you, 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 okay, so I have a weird capita. question. You could do per capita. Let's, you could do per capita, but go ahead. Yeah. Well, no, because you can, per capita still changes with regard to access. And like, I, can't, I couldn't hop uh, a train at the found and to get away at the beginning of the founding of the country. Right. right. And I definitely couldn't hop a plane to another country. Uh, I could go hide out in the woods, but anyway. Yeah. The question the question I had to ask is, let's say there's something in the Old Testament that you think is essential and beneficial in modern society, 
And let's mm -hmm. just say for the sake of argument that I agree with you that this would be essential and beneficial to modern society. What does that, does that tell us anything at all about whether or not the Bible is true or accurate? Does it tell us anything at all about whether or not there's a divine source for it? Because no, I'm never, I've never claimed that the Bible doesn't have some good advice in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, no, as far as does it, does it prove that the, the divine inspiration of it, I would say in and of itself, no, that fact does not prove the divine inspiration of it. I would go to other avenues. I would go to things that I've just seen yeah. absolutely get obliterated uh, on the show. And, and honestly, I'm not interested. But I mean, there's a bunch of calls waiting, and, mm -hmm. and I, I don't, I'm not trying to be rude, but if the thing is, let's say you said something that you and I agree on, uh, it's not going to prove that God is real. It's not going to prove the Bible's reliable. And if you say something that you and I don't agree on, then we have no way to move forward because you're basing this on your personal view of theology and I don't share that. So the only way we can do this yeah, is a re there's a reason why the United States is a secular nation founded on a secular document is because religious religions can't agree. We need to have laws that, and, and policies that don't appeal to people's personal religious convictions. Yeah. Yeah. I could see that being a true point. I mean, I would just say that there, there doesn't seem to be off the top of my head, any other, any other uh, holy book laid down that had laws that would still be applicable today that, that show such wisdom, you know, that comes from man because man's views changed back then things that could yeah. still be applied today. I would say that that in some I way, mean, we're also talking about the book that advocated for stoning people, my man. I mean, what wisdom is that? What wisdom is there in stoning somebody to death for not following the laws? Do you not believe in like capital punishment of any kind then? You're anti- No, and I certainly don't believe in stoning somebody to death is the best way to do that capital punishment. What wisdom is there? Please tell me. Where is the wisdom in that? Well, then this is the part where I might get laughed off the show and that's fine. But the wisdom in that was to show the severity of the crime. I mean, you might not agree to that or like that, but at the end of the day, that's, that was the goal of the law was to show the severity of the sin of the crime. And it was to rid the evil from among you as, as the word says, right? So yeah, that, like, it, like it, picking it, up, like picking up sticks on Sunday or having an unruly child. Those are severe. Let's kill them. Well, see, unruly child, Matt. That's just that's a gross misrepresentation of what that means. And we can uh, okay. if you want picking up sticks. Sure let's let's say them. now. I mean, let uh, me just assume that you're correct, and I'm grossly misrepresenting what it says. I'm literally using the language that it says. But let's no, assume. No, hang, on, means, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Yep. Jesus, it's. I'm trying to give you every benefit of the doubt. You can't even let me finish the sentence. Let's assume that you are correct, and I am grossly misrepresenting it, and I have a child. Uh -huh. who, who is essentially a drug-dealing gang member who will not listen to me and keeps violating the law. Should we kill him? I mean, in, in those times, yeah, that would have been the procedure. Yeah. No, procedure. I'm that's saying should we kill him true. now? No, I think that's one of those... Why, is it, why was it right be, then? Why was it right then and not right now? It's, a, it's something that changed. It was right then because that's what God commanded and it changed yeah. because we are told to deal with certain things like that differently now based on... Okay, how about this? Uh, dip the live bird in the blood of the dead one. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That's the wrong thing. Uh, where is that? I'm trying to find the verse of... You know where I'm talking about, Matt. I mean, uh, using I bird blood for ceremonies and sacrifices. I mean, not yeah, sacrifices. Cure, cure for leprosy. The cure for leprosy. Thank you. That's what I was trying to... You know, do we want to use bird's blood in, in curing not leprosy? A cure for leprosy. No, that's not a cure for leprosy. The, the Levites were also the doctors of that time. And so you were paying them with the bird. They were eating the meat, and that was their payment in order to be the constant priests and doctors of the time. That literally is, is how that should be, um, you know, maybe not translated, but that is the understanding that needs to be had when you're talking about that. It wasn't why do, using blood to cure leprosy. Why are we using that? Why is blood, bird's blood need to be involved in the process? How is that helping the because situation? The, the Levites? Yes. The Levi, it was just a, it was just a payment. Yeah, it was just no, a, no, 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 no. Like the no, bird, it's, body, so here we, it's just the payment so, and the blood as a result. So, no, so Leviticus 14 is yeah. where this is coming from. Yeah, thank you. And the priest shall order that one of the birds be killed over fresh water in a clay pot. He's then to take the live bird, dip it together with the cedar wood, the scarlet yarn, and the hyssop into the blood of the bird that was killed over the fresh water. Seven times shall he sprinkle the one to be cleansed of the defiling disease and then pronounce them clean. That's not a payment. It's blood magic. And it's right there in your book. That's a pain. Okay, so that that is one that I wasn't thinking of when you said that. So in that aspect, there's an argument to be made that hyssop 
and the scarlet and things of that nature actually had healing properties and it was it was a healing thing it wasn't yeah. blood yeah. magic as, as so, so basically so, you're opposed yeah, to blood magic that. you're you're opposed to this notion of blood magic until all of a sudden you're cornered into what it actually says and now you think that this blood magic used to work but so if i if i followed this procedure now does it not work anymore and by the way, what kind of cleansings does it do? No, I don't know. You would have to you would have to see the healing properties of hyssop and all those things, you know, mixed together. Maybe there is some way where it actually has a natural. Are you really giving this the benefit of the doubt because it's in your own book? If yeah. you read this in another book, would you really give it this benefit, benefit of the doubt? doubt? I mean, really? you know, at the end of the day, I didn't believe it at first when I first read it, but after coming to the conviction that it was true, I started to realize that it is true and there's Lots of scholars that well, Jacob. I'll tell you what. Go to a scientist, or go go to your local university professor, and go ahead and try this, and we can see if this works or not. Because, right. quite frankly, right, what what are we doing? You know, yeah. like if, if you're going to yeah. sit here and make a case for blood magic and Old Testament stuff, it's not going to get us anywhere. Uh, because in the thousands of years since this was written, or hundreds of years since it was written, depending on which which version you're going to read. Surely somebody who gave a damn could test and show that this blood magic is real. Now in Leviticus 14, before anybody emails in about it, this is one, not the one that is necessarily, it, it, the blood magic part doesn't necessarily cure the disease. It can make one ceremonially clean. And that's why I call it blood magic because the person must wash their clothes, shave their hair, bathe with this water, and then they're ceremonial clean, ceremonially clean, and then they come into the camp. But it, th this notion- Yeah, I wouldn't even- I wouldn't even put that into it. I wouldn't hold you to that because I don't know that it says ceremonially clean. So if someone will, that's fine. They I just it. read it. You were fair, but I wouldn't. Yeah, I, I literally just read it. Yeah, but I'm saying it could also have healing properties. Well, like I'm saying no, you don't know that it could. Picture. You do not know I that it could. You, know. you do not know that it could also have healing well, properties. Mm -hmm. You're just trying to say, hey, you haven't proved that it doesn't yet. Well, isn't that well, true, though? Yes, it's true. Does it matter? Does it matter whether or not I've disproved right. it? The time to believe it is after it's been proven. Why has nobody in the entire history of the world demonstrated the truth of this thing in the Bible that makes you guys look like you're nuts? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, at the end of the day, that's why haven't you that's done it? The theological discussion I was saying. No, it's not a theological yeah, well, discussion. The it's day, straight up science. Why haven't you done it? Well, if I'm not going to be allowed to finish, I mean, that's okay. It's your show. But, I mean, what I'm saying is it's part of the theological discussion because the Levitical priesthood it's is— It's not a theological a discussion. Priest. And so, well, it is, though. It's not. I don't care how many times you say it. It's a science-based thing. Either this process is effective for cleansing a disease or it's not. It's not a theological discussion. Oh, on that aspect, I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. Yes. That aspect, yeah. I don't know why someone hasn't done it. Yeah. I don't and know Jacob, why. Why haven't you? Is it because you don't care about the truth? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Right. No, no, it's not because I don't care. <laughs> I got to move on. We're, we're about out of time. Yeah. I want to try and get to another just, call. Just one more thing to say on that. You know, the thing is, if we keep trying to justify these older books and say, look how great some of this wisdom is, look how great, it, you know, all this stuff is, look how true this was, we are also importing the the prejudices and the awful things that come with it. Like that's yeah. a, that's a package deal. That's it's the reason why uh, my gay friends couldn't adopt somebody if they wanted to, because yep. you know, they're getting denied services because of, of some law. It's, it's, it's the same reason why my trans friends get, get the, the prejudices that they face because there's a thing in there saying that a man can't dress as a woman and they'll, they'll call them men and they'll say all these awful, awful things that aren't true. And it's just, it, we don't have to justify it. We can just get rid of it. Yeah. We, you know, it, it's funny because if I recall correctly, that call started out with him saying, this isn't cherry picking. <laughs> and yet it, it well, is. Yeah, it is. It is. It's, I don't know. It's, it's bad. It just, just don't deal with it. We can make, we can make a secular society with all the good stuff without all the bad stuff. You don't I, have to take it as a package deal. 